All right, hello everybody, happy Tuesday to you. Today we're gonna to start with a problem and see what we can do with it. Uh, so it reads, Marcus is in the eighth grade and his family is taking a vacation to Spain. He is trying to decide what clothes to bring, so he checks the average temperature in Spain and realizes all of the temperatures are in Celsius scale as opposed to Fahrenheit. Marcus learned a formula in his science class on how to convert a Fahrenheit temperature to Celsius, where C is Celsius and F is Fahrenheit. Can you help Marcus rewrite this formula and solve for F so he can convert the Celsius temperatures to Fahrenheit? So the current formula Marcus has is C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32, and he's trying to convert this to Fahrenheit. So go ahead and I'm going to pause the video and you can pause it as well. And let's see what you can do with writing this in terms of F or solving for F. All right, then. So we have C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. Okay, so what we're doing is trying to solve for F. So I want you to look at what you did and see what I do, and let's see if we came up with the same thing. So if I'm going to solve for F, I'm trying to isolate this variable just like I would isolate any other variable in an equation. So if I look at what I've got going on here is I have 5 ninths times F minus 32. So the first thing that I want to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 ninths, which is going to be 9 fifths. So if I multiply this side by 9 fifths, that gives me 9 fifths C. And then over here, I'm going to put this entire side in what we call brackets, just to show that I'm multiplying everything by 9 fifths. But what happens when I do that is all of these things cancel out. So that leaves me with 9 fifths C equals F minus 32. So if I'm going to get F by itself, the opposite of subtracting 32 would be to add 32 to both sides. And so when I do that, those cancel out. So I'm left with F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. And what I just did here was I solved the equation for F. All right, I just solved the equation for F. So if I put both of these uh, side by side, here I have C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32, and I have F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. If you notice here, everything in my new equation or solving for F is opposite everything in the previous one. So instead of multiplying by 5 ninths, I'm now, divide, I'm now multiplying by 9 fifths. Instead of subtracting 32 from the temperature first, I am now multiplying the temperature first by the 9 fifths and then adding 32 to that result. So what I've done is completely rewrote the equation in terms of the other variable by using inverse operations, okay? So now that I've rewritten the formula, I can now use the formula for problem solving. So if we go back to our slides here, the next slide says, during the week, Marcus will be in Spain. The daily temperatures are forecast as follows. So using the formula you just created, convert the Celsius temperatures to Fahrenheit, upload a copy of your work. So what I want you to do is I'll give you an example, again, of how to do this, is you have a, a column here of all your Celsius temperatures, and then the other column in the table is the Fahrenheit. So what I want you to do is reproduce this on a sheet of paper and complete the table using the formula we just created. Okay, now we're not done after we do that because there's one more slide that we need to do, which is going to give you some more information about what literal equations are and are not. So I need to go through that with you. But if we go back to this here, this is what I want you to um, 
to do next. So if you look here, my first Celsius temperature is seven. So I'm gonna take this new formula that I wrote and simply insert the seven where I have the variable C. So then that's gonna give me F equals. So on my calculator, I do nine fifths times seven, which gives me 12.6 plus 32. So that means Fahrenheit is going to be 44.6. Okay. So when it's seven degrees Celsius outside, it's 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I take my next one, which is F equals nine fifths times C plus 32, and my other Celsius temperature was nine, then I'm going to do the same thing is simply input the nine in for C. So I go, I, I multiply nine fifths times nine, which gives me 16.2. And so F equals 48.2. Okay, so what I would like for you to do right now is go ahead and pause the video and you can continue that table. And then once you finish the table, come back to the video because I'm going to do one final thing where we complete this Freyer model about uh, what the characteristics, definition, examples, and non-examples are of a literal equation. All right, welcome back, and I hope you were able to complete the table and it didn't give you too much difficulty. And now let's summarize what we've learned here um, on this Freyer model. So again, please reproduce this inside your notebook. And as I go through the different uh, blocks here of this Freyer model, go ahead and write this along with me inside of your notebook. So let's start with the definition of a literal equation. What is a literal equation? So like we've seen here with our example of Fahrenheit and Celsius, it is an equation or formula with two or more variables or symbols or an equation that is typically letters, numbers, and or symbols. Okay, so that's what a literal equation is. And that's what you just saw with our examples of Fahrenheit and Celsius is that there were two or more variables there as well as numbers, and as well as numbers, then we'll see some examples with some symbols. So our first example we'll use is temperature. So Fahrenheit, or F equals 9 fifths times C plus 32. Okay? So that's temperature. Another example is going to be in algebra. So in algebra, we have Y equals MX plus B, which is something you're going to be very familiar with in Math 1. And then we have AX plus BY equals C, which is both of these are what we call linear equations. One is in slope intercept form, the other is in standard form. And we'll get more familiar with those throughout the year. Then we have geometry. So area equals BH or base times height. Area equals, now up here, we're gonna go and get the mathematical symbol. So we're gonna insert special character and we're going to type pi. Ooh. Oh, I didn't insert. Let me try it again. All right, so area equals pi r and then 
we'll put the exponent. So area equals pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, which is something you learned last year, but that is a literal equation because it has letters and it has a mathematical symbol. Volume equals length times width times height. That's another literal equation because it's all letters. And then we have the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so that is going to be another example of a literal equation. Again, because it is all letters. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so then also in the usage of money. So I or interest equals the principal times rate times time. I equals PRT. Okay, if you're computing distance, D equals rate times time, or D equals RT. And then, of course, in science, we have Einstein's famous E equals MC squared. Okay, E equals MC squared. So these are all examples, and there's many more out there of what we would consider to be literal equations. But notice how they've got numbers, letters, and symbols within them, and each of these could be solved for a particular number, letter, or symbol. All right, so when we look here at characteristics, we're going to rewrite the formula or equation in terms of one of the variables or solving for a particular variable using inverse operations. Okay, so that's what we did to solve for the F in our temperature example is we used inverse operations. We used the reciprocal and we used, at the same time, we used subtraction, or excuse me, addition as opposed to subtraction, okay? So you're going to use inverse operations. Now, non-examples. So we have definition, examples, and characteristics. So some non-examples are going to be an expression. So an example of an expression would be 5x, okay? So 5x is just simply an expression. It just means 5 times x. They're attached to each other, and that's what it is. All right, we also have single variable <laughs> equations, okay? So something such as n plus 5 equals 10, single variable. 2n plus 5 equals 15, or even if we went as far as 3 times n plus 5 equals 2 times n plus 5, okay? So all those are single variable equations, okay? So that's something different we're getting into now in math one is instead of just having single variable equations, which is what you're accustomed to, we're going to start having equations that we call literal equations that have more than one variable or number in them. Okay, so that is our lesson for today. So what we did is we looked at a literal equation. We rewrote that literal equation in the terms of another. We then used it to solve some math problems and used it to put some meaning to the Celsius scale. And then here is our Freyer model with the definition, characteristics, examples, and non-examples. So tomorrow you will be doing the Passport for Learning exam, and I will send you an email with all the details about that. But Wednesday, 
When we come back together on Wednesday, we will be doing more literal equations. All right, have a great day, everybody. Thank you for your attentiveness.